Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today I'd like to continue on with a video a day this month, October 2020, wherein I talk about a film or a TV series that in one way or another, in my view, has something to do with the current season in which we find ourselves, namely that Halloween is just around the corner. So something with a little bit of a Halloween connection, something of a spiritual link, shall we say, with this kind of film or these kinds of genres. Today I'd like to focus on a film that is from 1972. I think it's a somewhat underrated film, but it's one that I have always loved since I was very fortunate to have been able to watch it when I was fairly young and I've known about it ever since. It is one of, uh, it is one of the more intriguing works that can be classified under the banner of film adaptations of novels by Agatha Christie. So Agatha Christie is a famous crime writer of detective fiction and one of the books that she wrote rather late in her career was a work called Endless Night. And then in 1972, filmmaker Sidney Gilliatt directed this film, Endless Night. And what I have here is the uh, Region A Kino Lorber Blu-ray, which is really excellent. It has a great commentary track as well. There is also this, which is the Powerhouse Indicator Region B Blu-ray release of Endless Night. And the special features are what distinguish these two releases. This has a number of special features that are not included here and vice versa. This has uh, some special features that aren't included here. So if you are a big fan of this film like I, then it might be worth it to try to get one or more or both of these uh, because I th actually think both of the uh, both of the uh, versions and their relative or their respective uh, uh, special features are highly highly worth it so uh, anyway just for in case you are interested there are these two versions and the work itself is a kind of uh, uh, remarkable work uh, because it came, as I say, in 1972, and it was uh, just before the period in the early to mid-1970s when Agatha Christie adaptations really uh, took off and became these big blockbuster entertainments, starting with Murder on the Orient Express, and then Death on the Nile, and other films of that nature. This film, Endless Night, came, as I say, in 1972, so it was just before that huge, shall we say, launch of big screen adaptations of Agatha Christie works. However, it does fall into, the endless. this film, Endless Night, does fall into this really interesting realm of adaptations of Agatha Christie works for a number of reasons. First of all, it is a very famous mystery plot from Agatha Christie. And Endless Night as a story, as a work, is considered one of Agatha Christie's uh, uh, more popular and uh, more celebrated works in the latter half of her writing career. So we have therefore a film, the Sidney Gilliatt film here, which is, I think, for all intents and purposes, a really, uh, more or less, a pretty much a true and pretty much accurate and close to the novel adaptation. With a few exceptions, I grant you that. But as far as the trajectory of the film and the characters, this is all in all, I think, a pretty faithful adaptation of the Agatha Christie work, which I say as an underlying story and source material is fantastic. And thus the film itself in terms of a plot is very fantastic. The other thing too, however, which is remarkable about this work is that it has a suspense thriller drama dynamic to it that is, of course, inextricably linked with the mystery story that is threaded all the way through the film from the very beginning. But what 
is remarkable is that this mystery, I'm sorry, this suspense thriller element is further embellished in cinematic terms via the quirky editing, the way that sound seems to be looped in and looped out in an almost oddly uh, discordant manner. But it is all fueling a particular purpose of the film, namely as a means of perhaps presenting a psychological state of mind or states of minds going forward. And in that respect, I think the film provides a rich and quite deep uh, cinematic landscape on which a viewer can latch on and uh, we can therefore appreciate the film upon multiple viewings. And indeed, this film is constructed in a way that I think uh, serves the act of multiple viewings really, really nicely. And in fact, I would go on to say further that multiple viewings of this film, I think, further enhance and enrich one's appreciation of this work. And we realize that, in fact, a lot of the things that are going on are really filled with a lot of purpose and meaning that one might not necessarily catch upon initial glance. So I think in that regard, we have a wonderful uh, constructed work, cinematically speaking, that is also uh, very much uh, quite novel and quite fresh in its approach. Uh, and that is also in keeping with and, in con and is consistent with the underlying source material from Agatha Christie, which I think is really great. And also we should point out too that the performances are really wonderful. We have a, a cast that is made up of great actors. Uh, we have the combination of Haley Mills and Hal Bennett, and uh, they form, of course, a, a, an on-screen couple. This is not the first time, of course, that they've appeared on screen together. Uh, but this is also one of their memorable screen appearances. And my goodness, they have such a wonderful chemistry. And their, their relationship, which is at the center of this film, I think, uh, is really supported very nicely by their respective uh, performances. Absolutely stellar stuff. And then we have, of course, the supporting cast uh, provided by people like uh, George Sanders and Per Oscarson and Britt Eklund and uh, Lois Maxwell and others. And so uh, this is a really interesting cast uh, that, is helped, uh, that is helping to uh, populate and uh, really embellish the landscape uh, that is being presented here. And the landscape, too, has a wonderful a quirky edge to it that is propelled further by the unforgettable music score by Bernard Herrmann. This is one of uh, Herrmann's great scores, and it is really eerie and quirky and bombastic and romantic and charged with emotional intensity and also uh, has some zips and zings uh, of a Hermanesque nature that I think give one a little bit of a jolt or quite a bit of a jolt in fact uh, which is I think very consistent with the proceedings of the film and so uh, we have that and also we have uh, elsewhere uh, really interesting quirky and uh, quite jarring moments of, shall we say, uh, eccentricity of craft that I think is really effective, incredibly effective. And I think uh, Sidney Gilliatt and company provide a, 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 a cinematic palette of a style and construction that serves to be very eerie and quite unnerving and very mysterious and also in keeping with a Agatha Christie type of mystery while at the same time providing what might be described as being a real tough and perhaps modern edged, and when I say modern, I mean a maybe psychological based edge feel to the overall arc of the story. And so I think we're getting a lot here. And I should say in closing that there are some images in this film that are terrifying, really terrifying. And especially to uh, someone like myself who saw this film as a little boy growing up, 
when I saw this film for the first time and uh, and you know, on, on VHS tape rental and when I saw some of these images combined with the music and combined with all the other elements of the mise-en-scene etc I was terrified <laughs> such that even now many many years later as an adult watching this film again I still get creeped out by many of the moments here, many of the great classic moments of this film. And so I think it has that great sense of mystery and an unease of atmosphere and also the potential to shock and to chill, which I think make it, uh, which I think make this film uh, an overall treat to watch, especially during this October season. So my dear friends, this is the 1972 film adaptation of the story by Agatha Christie. And this adaptation is from Sidney Gilliatt. This is the film Endless Night. Oh, and I should say finally that if you do decide to watch this film, uh, please, uh, I urge you to try to not read up about it. Um, and uh, just watch it as fresh as possible without knowing any of the details because as I say I think part of the fun is in watching the film and reveling in the mystery element of it upon first watch but then after you've watched it and if you are so inclined you can watch it again and again and again because as I say it is a film that has a lot of riches and a lot of detail that can be further appreciated upon rewatch. And I think that is a really incredible feat indeed. So once again, my friends, 1972's Endless Night. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time, my dear, dear friends. Stay strong, stay safe, and cheers. Thank you.